today we're gonna have a lot of fun playing some mono red and i never in my life thought i'd say those words but today's list is actually a ton of fun because we're gonna be playing mono red in the form of a burn cue the intro let's talk about it what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video today we're going to be playing some mono red a list that i never thought i'd say again but we're not playing the typical mono red goblins turn them sideways smash your face we're playing mono red burn which does offer up a few extra play lines and nuances to it that make it a lot more fun and enjoyable to play but if you are new here before I dive into today's video, if you find any value in today's video or you just enjoy hanging out with us today, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it is a free way to help support the channel. And uh, we're on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate all the help we could get. And uh, if we couldn't try getting this video to maybe, you know, 150 likes, I'd really appreciate that as well. That goes a very long way with the YouTube algorithm. So with that all being said though, Let's talk about today's list. Like I said, it's a lot of fun. So a couple of key players in this list, I guess we'll start with Thermal Alchemist. This is really the kind of the glue that holds this thing together because this thing's gonna offer up residual damage over time, very slowly, but over time, this thing is gonna rack up a lot of one damage ping. Over time, this is gonna get us to a, a closer, which is our uh, Stesnia. Uprising, this card right here is going to close out most of our games because this card is going to be in a very explosive seven damage to our opponent's face. Once we reach the uh, 13 permanents, we can take this card, sacrifice it, and deal seven damage to our opponent's face to win the game. So we're trying to get our opponent down to, you know, as close to seven as possible with the Alchemist and win the game with the Stesnia, uh, Stesnia Uprising. These two cards are kind of the glue that hold the deck together. They also offer really good protection, be, uh, being that Thermal Alchemist is an 0-3 body, pretty big. And then the St uh, Stesnia Uprising, this is going to offer us up a bunch of 1-1 humans that we can chump block and use as fodder. Um, how do we, you know, control the board? There's a lot of different burn spells we can use to control the board. We have plenty of removal. We have two spike field hazards four frost bites with the full play set of snow mountains <clears throat> we also have crush the weak which destroys mono white we have a really good matchup against mono white you guys will see that shortly um, we also have magic missile which is great removal as well <clears throat> this card can spread damage throughout multiple targets my apologies i have to clear my throat my bad guys magic missile is a great way to kind of clear up a lot of those uh mono white creatures because they always have one toughness so you can get up to three target creatures potentially with this card which is sweet um that's pretty much going to be most of our removal then we're going to also try to be going uh to our opponent's face with some big royal eruptions maybe if we kick them we can deal five we've also got um the inspiration inspiration can open up the uh possibility to a sideboard plus we could deal three damage to any target which means most likely our opponent's face um, I don't know if I mentioned play with fire, but this also this also can go to face for two damage as well as any creatures. So we have a lot of very cool um, burn spells that you know allow us to choose any targets of our choice, which is great. Um, a card that can't choose its target, unfortunately, is Chandra. This does deal one damage to your opponent's face over time, and at the same time, you're gaining um, an additional mana to use, which is really helpful, especially for running short on mana this also in the late game if you're kind of already ahead of your opponent you can start drawing some cards off the top of your library which is super helpful and then if you just need that one extra turn where you're just short by one you know permanent from the uprising to deal that seven damage of lethal we've got two of these gambits which allow us to take one additional turn keep in mind we don't play this for its cleave costs so if you play this card you better intend on killing your opponent the following turn otherwise you will lose the game but these uh, are splashed in here for two of because sometimes we just need that one extra turn to close the game out but this list is so much fun guys i was crushing mono white and i cannot wait for you guys to see that in the gameplay footage um, as far as land goes we have two field of ruins and three den of the bugbears which could also help close the game out uh, but ultimately we go to our sideboard now two environmental sciences to start from scratches for that extra one point of damage but also killing some artifacts we have a spirit summoning uh, introduction to prophecy and a mascot exhibition 
that's my sideboard. Have fun as always with the sideboard. Make it your own. Make it unique. Make it special. But that's the list in a nutshell, guys. I hope you enjoy. Oh, wait. I have an extra card in here. Where did that come from? That, that shouldn't be that way. That's my bad. I don't know how that extra card got in there. I think I might have one too many magic missiles that now that I'm looking at it. But anyways, that's the deck in a nutshell. Enjoy the gameplay footage. We'll see you guys back here at the end for some final thoughts and uh, on how we thought the deck played out. And uh, we'll see you guys there. Peace. All right, it's time to let it burn, baby. Let's go. Time to let it burn. Chandra is going to get a, another shot here of redemption. Love Chandra. I think it's such a cool card. I think in this deck too, it's going to be so good. Okay, so we got a pretty good hand here. I will keep this. This is definitely worth a keep. And Crush the Week is going to do us so good. Crush the Week is going to absolutely dunk on Mono White. So that's why it's in the list. All right. It just did become more expensive, but it's still not a big deal at all. Um, Thalia does hurt the deck quite a bit. It really does, but it's totally fine. They leave Magic Missile. Interesting. Magic Missile, if I could find that fourth land. There it is. I was going to say, Magic Missile could do some serious work as well. We could spread this damage out really nicely. Might be able to pick off even another creature here. Yep. Oh, they're going to get Magic Missile. All right. Well, it looks like it's going to have to be crushed a week then. No big deal. If they leave Magic Missile, I'm going to be shocked. Yeah, they take it. Really making my uh, plays here a lot more expensive and they're being pretty annoying. Okay. That's pretty sweet. If I crack this now, I could still cr uh, crack Crush the Week as well. Perfect. Okay. So there's no retaliation shot that we need to fear from the Faceless Haven after we hit Crush the Week. Which is huge. Now we're going turn for turn here. And it's another Thalia making my magic missile expensive again. Oh, that card is... That card is brutal. Alright, we will get... I think we want mascot exhibition at this point, right? Three, four, five. We have six mana. Might be worth it, man. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, that might be worth the grab here. Three, four, five. All right, magic missiles about to come in hot here and shake things up. Shake it on up. All right, they're down to one, one, two that can train with two cards in hand. I like that. And there's the scoop. They wanted nothing more to do with us, man. That's unfortunate. I was having some fun there. I felt like that game could have gone a little longer and we were going to start building up our ability to, you know, with this, uh, the uprising, man, that would have been good times, but all right, on to the next one. And that honestly, that honestly might be the matchup we want to see most of the time. Mono white. Uh, we have a pretty solid, solid matchup. I think against mono white. Is it turned is always scary. Never really want to see that in any circumstance. This one included in that. Uh, I think we could beat as it turns if we can burn them out quick enough if we get the right draws, but. All right. Ooh, and we get the Thermal Alchemist. That's going to be helpful. This card is how we primarily usually get our damage dealt. Going second against Mono White again. Play with Fire is awesome. Two damage is huge especially when we're talking about just one mana we'll let that uh familiar do some work a little bit got a big body coming out next turn so alchemist coming in magic missile probably going to be getting fired here after this next turn i'm sure they're going to play a couple of spells here i just hope they don't steal the alchemist with um with the cathar but, I mean, again, it's not the end of the world. We have options here. Okay, it is a Cathar. That's fine. They steal it. We Magic Missile next turn. We get it back. Ooh, I forget that that gets the pump. So, actually, Magic Missile, no good there. I mean, it is still good. We can go here and here and just do two damage and just let the Familiar survive. Would have been nice to go 2-1, though. 
just sweep their creatures all together but the alchemist is like i said it's big enough for the stone binder uh to block here so be all right another cathar though <laughs> another cathar ouch all right let's go ahead and magic missile just this for three and then we will play with fire at instant speed uh on the cathar the cathar won't transform here because we made a, a play so it's still a 2-2 two -two. all right unable to block that unfortunately so our, our little plan here to block or to kill and block something not gonna work because our opponent has a 4-3 and we don't want it to kill our thermal this is really nice because it can keep chump blocking it can keep chump blocking the um faceless haven so that's what we'll do we'll just play the we'll just play the one one as a chump blocker for the faceless haven repeatedly if they don't want to play anything and uh we'll just keep tapping our thermal alchemist until we can get to the ultimate seven They're probably going to take play with fire. Yeah, I was going to say that's the best card here just because it, you know, we want to blow up the flyer. Them having a flyer is unblockable for us, so. Ping them for the one. Love this card. I think this card really holds the deck together, if I'm being honest. All right, if I play Chandra, I could get the one additional mana for when I deal the damage here, and then I can royally wrap the Spellbinder, so it feels pretty good. Target creature gets 2-2 two, two until the end of turn. If it's a human, it gets 3-3 three, three and gains Indestructible instead. Okay, well, that unfortunately changes things, doesn't it? How do I handle that? Um. Wow, they're giving it indestructibility. That's pretty wild. All right, it's just till the end of turn, so it will go back to a three-one. So we will just hit him in the face here and we'll look to uh, just finish him off with the uprising eventually. That puts us at nine. They, I can't believe they seen through my little play there though. I'm actually pretty impressed that they gave it indestructibility before I cast my spell. Regardless, they should have played, they should have waited until I cast the spell. It's just. Like they, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but, uh, they played that wrong, but it seems like they, they guessed what I was trying to do correctly. Maybe they thought Chandra could deal the one damage anywhere. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe they thought the one damage could go to a creature. Okay. We get to draw a card. That's kind of helpful. It's still a permanent two. Which does count towards this. Portable hole. How are they going to do? What are they going to take here? Okay. All right. I kind of like our position right now. It's not. It's not terrible. It's not terrible at all. We'll deal the one damage and we will just say go. Um, I know we're giving up um, an additional mana here, but I still think we're okay. Let's just leave that alone because it will be helpful to block these faceless havens. Um, how many permanents we at? Nine. So we're getting close to that final shot here. Uh, we can blow up the spell binder. Nice. It's a land off the top. That should seal the, the, the victory for us here. I hope. Faceless Haven. We knew that was coming in. We got infinite blockers for that. Not too scared. 
Spellbinder goes face. And that goes to Chandra. Okay. Okie dokie. We'll block here. We'll block here and we will blow up Spellbinder. Easy peasy. Okay. I would imagine they're getting a little frustrated at this point. All right, so we have options here. Um, the options being that we could activate Chandra's ability to draw a card here, but instead I choose to go there because I think what I'm gonna end up doing here is activating my Den of the Bugbear. If I do that though, they could activate a Faceless Haven and block. So maybe not, maybe we'll just draw a card here. Let's just draw a card. Um, Uprising is at eight. Okay, that's not terrible. Um, I still think we hold the play with fire at instant speed here. Play with fire might save us at some point in this game. So we'll just end our turn. I think we just end our turn. We can do this when we know we're going to close the game out and we know we're going to hit our 13 permanents. So right now we're at nine. We might even win the game without having to blow them up with the uprising. Another land. Okay. That should, that should do it. They can activate both faceless havens now though, but we get to kill one of them with the play with fire. So I'm super happy. We're able to, um, hold up, uh, the play with fire. I think that was definitely the right call. Definitely the right call here. Now we guarantee ourselves, you know, that, that protection from the Haven all day long because of the uprising and we draw another one. Okay. So yeah, this is really, really good. Really good. Now we can double down to on the uh, seven damage. There's nothing, there's no way they can escape it. So. See if our opponent has another play here. We might actually even alt the, the Chandra, which says exile the top five cards of our library. You may cast red spells from among them this turn. You get an emblem with whenever you cast a red spell, this emblem deals X damage where X is the amount of mana cost of that spell. Interesting. So we alt this and we get to basically get a bunch of cards, right? Five. And uh, we can cast them. And every time we do it, Deals the exact same amount of damage as their mana cost. That's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. This is kind of futile. I mean, we're spitting out two of these a turn, so pretty futile. If they had a sky clave or a sky mall, that could have been pretty bad. We might even just exile the top card of our library here um, and try to cast it. I think we got them locked out here. I don't think there's any way they can come back from this. Dude, mono red is actually fun to play again. It's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy, man. I haven't had fun playing mono red since big red, man. When there's Ugin and stuff. That that list was kind of fun. The iron crag where you can ramp into Ugin. That was a lot of fun. What are you doing, opponent? Let's get a move on. You have one card in hand. What could it possibly be? Watch it be something really good and they're just slow rolling me. That would be so annoying. Hey, wait, where'd my extra emotes go? I added them What in the world. All right, well, we might have to make an edit here. I think we might have a salty mono white player like usual. So we might have to make a cut here. Okay, so we ran into somebody with the most ultimate level of class. Just roping the heck out of us right now. So I changed my mind, by the way. I'm just going to go ahead and deal the eight and uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right. Just going to pass the turn here and uh, we'll just probably end up winning the game through the roping. But uh, let's go ahead and just have the uprising create these uh one ones and say go oh they're actually gonna play now that's weird okay well they took four timeouts earlier so i don't know why they decided now they're gonna play 
Interesting, though. I think we're going to win with uh, Chandra's ultimate, which is going to be a heck of a lot of fun, man. Or not. They scoop it up before we can do that. And uh, GG's to my friend here. GG's. So, <clears throat> I have to share a miracle with you guys. I just had lunch. I just had Chipotle. And uh, it's the first time since I got COVID a few weeks ago. Or about a week and a half ago. that I tasted my food. So, I'm super stoked right now. I had to run out and tell my wife. I was like, you're never going to believe it. I tasted it. We got chips from Chipotle. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy right now. I'm so happy. I'm not happy that we're playing against Is It Turns. Um, do we use this one mana just to get to play with fire off and try to kill him quickly? It's possible we want to do that because we can also do this. Just really put the heat on him. I know I could leave this open for a block potentially, but there's no hasty creatures coming down here. We know exactly what our opponent's trying to do. We're trying to get them dead before they do it. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. It's so weird though when you get COVID, how you lose your taste and smell. It's so strange. It's like nothing I've ever felt before either. It's like... It's not like when you get a cold and your nose gets stuffy and you can't uh, taste because it's like linked up with, you know, your nose, but it's something completely different, man. Like I can feel the sensation of sweetness or feel the sensation of like sour or whatever, or even spicy, right? But there's just no taste. It's super odd. Drop another alchemist here. Bop him for another one. Drop another alchemist, I think. The more permanents, the better, so we can get to this um, ultimate seven damage. <clears throat> That's fine. That's fine. We still got one damage too to deal with the one one. I think we're gonna be able to kill them before they can do their little infinite turn cycle, man. Happy days. Oh, happy days. I should have probably finished these chips before I recorded. My apologies. But, uh, wanted to share the good news. Don't worry, I'll mute as I'm chewing. All right, I think I know what I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. You got to make sure your sequencing is good here, man, because it could it could change literally the whole game here. They do have divide. Interesting. Okay. It's fine. Totally fine. This will put them down underneath seven damage. So if we can just get this to pop, man, we win the game. Pretty simple. Let's go. We beat is it turns, baby. I was really worried about that matchup. I really was. I knew that if we had the right hand and the right draws, we could beat them if we can burn them out quick enough, which is exactly what we did. But <clears throat> if we would have drawn like a handful of crush the weeks or whatever, and got matched up here it could have been trouble but glad that worked out all right i just finished the chips feeling pretty good man feeling pretty good still can't really taste the soda too well but um 
This hand. Could be good. Could be good. I think it's keepable. I just, I don't know. It feels like, it feels like a losing hand if I'm being real. I don't know why. It might have to do with the fact that we have two lands. That never feels good. And we're up against is it turn. So that unfortunately verifies the fact that we're probably going to lose. We have crushed the weakened hand. Not very helpful. Um, I mean, two thermal alchemists though is really good. One thermal alchemist is really good. They already got a card foretold, so that's probably going to be their all runs epiphany. I think going second here really hurt, but we were bound to lose one. And I, and I know that we were probably going to take that L against this particular deck. So <clears throat> not super surprised here. Okay, let's go ahead and just play Chandra, I think here. Pass the turn. Sorry, there's a chip in my tooth. Is that the third iteration? No, it's not. Oh, I thought that was the third one. I don't know why. Oh, I'm so happy, man. Finally over the hump here of this COVID situation. Feeling good. Oh, by the way, I got a negative test. So that feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab a card here. It's Royal Eruption. Let's not let it go to waste. Let's not let it go to waste. I'm really looking for lands when I'm, when I'm plussing up with Chandra. Not really looking for burn spells, but they do help. I mean, it's not, it's not bad if we do get a burn spell, but I do need more lands so I could, so I can try and cast more spells. These two cards on the end are terrible for this matchup. Divide by zero, you savage. All right, that leaves him with three mana. Could get divided again, which would be terrible. I do think Chandra's the play here though. It's residual damage, you know, over time. So I think yeah, that is the play. It's a small amount of damage, but it is damage. <laughs> Missing these land drops is pretty bad too. The Alchemist Gambit could be pretty sweet if we had things set up properly too. We'd really like to showcase that card if possible. There's the Epiphany. Pretty sure that just seals the deal here on the victory for them. Yep, that'll do it. Classic. Classic, classic turns, man. Opponents sitting here now with three more turns to go. With a Galvanic iteration. Being able to be casted from flashback position. Holy cow. You want to talk about broken cards? Let's talk about Galvanic iteration, huh? <laughs> We know we lost. We're just kind of allowing them to get this, get this W. We'll let them go through whatever it is they feel like they need to go through here. Wish I had my emotes. I don't know why they're not on there, but I would have given the little sleepy guy like. Good game. Good game. GG's.
All right, right into the next one. Let's go ahead and forget that one ever happened. Let's forget about is it turns. Let's let's pretend it's just not in the meta right now. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, it is, but let's pretend it's not. Okay, this hand could be incredibly good if we're up against mono white. So we'll take the gamble. Let's see. Okay, you're saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. Let's get down the alchemist here, which can put a body in front of all of this stuff here. And it doesn't die to crush the weak, which is great news for us. And, uh, foretell this bad boy. Foretell this. Let Luminarch Aspirant, 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 whatever people call it. Let, that, let it think it's going to get a 1-1 one, one counter when it's not. Oh, no. I totally forgot. There we go. Totally forgot to trigger the tap. Thank God it lets you do it again. And it's another land, which does allow us to get down the uprising. That's huge. And we'll say go. I can't believe I almost forgot to trigger the thermal. That's one thing I knew I was probably going to end up doing once or twice. It's just unfortunately. Oh, they take the uprising. That's actually a really smart idea. I didn't anticipate that. Huh. Well, this makes things annoying. Ooh, another uprising. That's actually extremely helpful. Okay. So with this uprising, how do we want to handle this? Probably just play it right outright. Just outright play it. Let's get the one one. We're going to get a 4-4 four, four too, because when we kill the uh, Apparition with our uh, Crush the Weak, it's going to be really helpful. Things are not going our way right now, but uh, hopefully they'll turn around here. All right, we're down to nine. Not great. That's pretty sweet, actually, because we can actually get rid of this. Okay, that's really helpful. That's really helpful. Okay, we'll grab more mana, too, I think. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, let's go. We got him down to 14 already. This residual damage that just keeps reoccurring is so helpful, man. So helpful. And what's even great, uh, too, about this is like you guys seen in the pr uh, previous games is that we can just chump block these havens all day long with this um, uprising. It's really, really nice. Okay, that's unfortunate. But you know what? We have something for them. We'll grab this. It's so helpful that uh, we're able to just uh, trigger their alchemist after we've cast the spell. It's so helpful. All right, we get a 4-4 four, four back on our side, which is now going to be a very scary creature for the Faceless Haven to run into. And we do have two Field of Ruins, by the way, too. I haven't I haven't forgotten about those. I just haven't had the uh, best opportunity to crack them. Okay. Which are they, what are they going to take here? They leave the Alchemist. Interesting. They don't care about the 4-4. Hmm. You know what? I don't... I actually want the 4-4. Especially if you took our other uprising. I think the 4-4 four four is going to be pretty key to trying to win this game. So, All right. And we get another 4-4 four four here. Let's go ahead and kill this first. So there's no retaliation here with the Faceless Haven. And then we'll hit him with a Magic Missile for 3. Crushing the Apparition. <clears throat> so they don't have any blocks. This is going to be so good. 
This is gonna be so good. There's the scoop. We are about to go in for four more damage plus the tick from the alchemist. GG's Mono White. I don't think he can beat us. I don't think Mono White can beat us. Looks like we have time for one more in this video. Hopefully we get another Mono White matchup. That'd be great. Seems like those are the only two decks we're playing. Mono White and Is It Turn, so. Good old, uh, what do they call it? Good old matchmaking system. Let's, yeah, we can keep this. We can keep this hand. And it looks like Mono White again. Let's go. We have a pretty solid hand against Mono White. Not the greatest hand, but a pretty good hand. And that makes things a little tough. That was the one card I was afraid of the most there. But it's okay. You know what? Let's get the Alchemist down. It can block the 2-1. No big deal. Um, if they play a Spellbinder, that would be really annoying. If they don't, thank goodness. Okay. Interesting. So what we'll do here then is we'll play this and that will make the spike field hazard um, available for one. Beautiful, man. Absolutely beautiful. Love that. And uh, we still have a great defender here plus magic missile which could take out to up to three creatures depending on the types of creatures they are all right that's annoying because that's going to take up two of our magic missile oh okay those are going to be hard to deal with i can't lie they spread out the counters okay so if i play chandra i get one that's not enough to magic missile, so gonna have to magic missile here and now. Alright. That's super unfortunate because now the um the Luminarch is gonna be really hard to deal with. Um it's just gonna get too big to burn out. So it's actually gonna be extremely hard to deal with. If we didn't draw into three Chandras here, I'd feel a lot better too if we had some more answers, but we don't. Oh, they pump right away with the Paladin class. Interesting. Well, they are attacking, which does leave the Den of the ba uh, Den of the Bugbear available for options here for us. So I actually don't mind them attacking us there. It leaves them a little more susceptible to some retaliation. Ooh, that's a really good answer actually, because the chump blocks there are all day long. Okay. I think we might have found our answer here. As long as it doesn't get picked up by a uh, Skyclave Apparition though. We saw that happen obviously last game. Let's just hope that doesn't end up happening again. Oh, come on. Not this again. That is too big for us to deal with, man. Too freaking big. Plus, it spits out these other creatures. Oh, that's just... That's just a sad day for us, man. Sad day, man. Okay, play with fire. I mean, something. It is something. Alright, so... Now we could play. Oh no, we should have hit play with fire prior to combat or before their turn because now we have to pay extra thanks to the paladin class. Didn't even think about that. Didn't even think about that. We're going to take a lot of damage here. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. Can we kill them by next turn? We have eight permanents. They're down to 12 damage or 12 life. Oh, this is tough, man. I don't think we're going to be able to pull this one out. I really don't. Wow, these things are massive, too. Unbelievable. Okay, so we block here. Nine, five, twelve. 
Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I have to make a block either way, so might as well block the biggest one. Okay. We had a great start too, man. I don't know what happened here. <clears throat> we had a fantastic start. Come on, Chandra. Think of something good. I think that's a wrap though, unfortunately. Yep, we got him down to six. Uh, we ended up taking the L here, but um, we just, I mean, we played that pretty well. I think i think we beat them in most cases, except for the fact that they drew into, you know, Adeline, and then they topped, I'm sure, an adversary at some point late in the game here. So it's just super unfortunate, man. Super unfortunate. We had pretty solid success, though, against Mono White overall. Pretty happy with how that went down, so... Good video overall. Absolutely love Mono Red. And then uh, we're going to break it down, though, for some final thoughts here. And uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. And that's going to do it for today's gameplay footage, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. And I really appreciate you guys all so much who have made it this far into the video. This is the part where we break down the list and talk about maybe things we would change to the deck. But before I do, just want to say a huge thank you if you made it this far. It helps the algorithm on YouTube a lot when you make it this far into these videos because they show that the, you know, the watch time goes up and then they want to push it out to more people. So thank you so much for helping this video grow. It means the world to me, guys. Uh, with that being said, let's talk about the deck a little bit, man. I've really enjoyed it. I think it played extremely well. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. And um, I think I was playing with one extra card this whole time. <laughs> I think I was playing with one extra card this whole time, but uh, still the deck performed really, really well. Even with 61 cards, that was a big mistake on my end. But um, a card we didn't get to see any action today was the Alchemist Gambit, which it is going to be one of those cards that's super rare for us to play because it's only two of in the list. And there's a reason for that is because it, it's really there for like, you want to top deck it in those key moments where it's like, man, I just wish I had one extra turn. We can get this uh, uprising to 13 and we can win the game, but we're shy by one permanent. Well, the Gambit can get you there and close out a game. So I really think this card does belong in this list. Um, you might be able to take it down to a one of even, but uh, the Gambit could actually pull you out of a very sticky situation to win a game. So I really think it belongs in a list. There's not a whole lot as far as I would change the list because I really think it's about as balanced as it can get between, you know, things like crush the weak which destroy mono white but are dead against is it turns this is one of those cards that's like okay do you want to gear your deck more towards mono white or do you want to gear it towards more of those is it turns those are really the only two lists that are going to be out there and uh you just gonna have to make your decision um on what it is you want to do you could you could take things like crush the weak and frostbite out of your deck that only target creatures and you can put more things in the deck that um you know deal damage um anywhere um you could deal damage to their face you can get more options but you do lose power in those situations like you could throw the shock in place of frostbite which shock does deal damage to you know any target your opponent's face being one of those targets um it gives you more flexibility over the frostbite but the frostbite could end up killing something that a shock couldn't because it deals that one extra damage you could also try to throw in more spells that have you know versatility to him like a braid a braid deals those uh those three damage to the creatures which is really great or it can destroy an artifact so if you're running into like a seeker's chariot this could be pretty solid uh, this list offers so many different ways you can go about it there's things like cathar uh, cathartic pyre which could not only deal three damage to your creature but you could also cycle out cards that aren't good for certain matchups like let's say crush the weak isn't good you can get rid of it with the cathartic pyre uh, drawing two uh two more cards so there's like i said a million ways you can do this you could throw in some demon bolts to take care of mono green because mono green's toughness is typically four or more so you can play around with this a lot and uh really try to uh, come to a a solid deck for yourself take this list this is by no means a copy paste type situation definitely take the copy paste situation but then maybe tune it up to what you guys are seeing um the algorithm on this game as far as your matchups go it's different for everybody so if you start running into more of a certain type of matchup this is a very flexible list that you can change pieces in and out of to really dial it into your style but man i really enjoyed today's list that's all i have to say about it as always i leave the ball in your court um, let me know in the comments down below if you guys find some cards that are better for this list for yourself i'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below 
Um, I really appreciate that as well because again, more algor algorithm food for the YouTube. It always helps. So uh, with that being said though, on the way out of here, as always, I'd love to give a huge shout out to my Marty Mob, man. Thank you so much to the Marty Mob for being part of the membership program here on the uh, channel. It helps so much when you guys, uh, you know, with all your monetary support on this channel, it helps keep the channel alive and keeps it moving. So thank you so much for that. And uh, I do plan on getting another box soon of Crimson Vow. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, probably in the next like two weeks. Um, but if you guys want to become part of the membership program here and become part of the Marty Mob, you can hit the join button down below or the link in the description. You'll get more details on what it is you get for the, from the channel when you join. But uh, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope to see you guys back here on Wednesday. And uh, can't wait for that alchemy on Friday, baby. Uh, Till next time. Peace. Hit up three times like a hat trick. The name is Fizzy No Patrick. If you play him, then it's tragic. Hit him with the mythic. Yeah, that's magic. Yeah, MTG. That's what you'll see if you like and subscribe. Where's the upload, man? Man, all of the time. Coming with the best decks, but the meta. This ain't cheap, yeah.